Now we have a set of um, four um, use cases corresponding to research ecosystem. They're rather diverse because this is sort of a grab all for uh, cross cross cutting uh, use cases which didn't naturally fit into any one particular discipline. It's not meant to say they aren't important, they're just cross cutting. In fact, cross cutting is often the most important case. Uh, well, the DataNet um, Federation Consortium, DFC, is an important um, project, um, which has actually 25 separate science and engineering pro projects involved with it. And it's basically allowing the Federation with this, tackling data management. It has a very important piece of software called IROTS, Integrated Rule Oriented Data System, developed. Um, um, originally at SDSC, but now headed at the um, University of North Carolina, Carolina by Reagan Moore. And it, um, it's, uh, it is, this is sort of the standard now used for metadata management across um, many fields. And as you look at this big data, many of these big data projects, we'll come across one that explicitly says this in the, um, um, uh, for a NASA project later on in the uh, Earth science area. Uh, that managing this data is critical, and being able to take the metadata, um, properly process it, and so on is critical. Um, so this notes that IROS manages petabytes of data, hundreds of millions of files, hundreds of millions of metadata attributes, tens of thousands of users, and a thousand storage resources. It works with other types of cyber infrastructure, particular workflow. Workflow is always very sensitive to metadata, which has to link different capabilities together. And it runs on clouds and other types of luster type storage models and lots of different transport protocols. So this is a very important, it itself is not big data, but it's essential to manage big data. This is a technology to manage big data. Here is an actual um, graph which uh, shows how the, how this project is set up. This comes from this data. DataNet is a big NSF um, initiative, build data consortiums. And this is in the spirit of that initiative, supplying the technology to manage the data used by multiple consortiums. And um, you can see here the policies are very important. In this IROTS approach, you specify policies which are automatically applied. Here we have another type of approach to collaboration. This is not so well known, I think, at least in the US. It started off in Europe. Dissonet. And it is a way of trying to organize collaborations, the interdisciplinary collaborations that you find in, um, in typical science today. So it's implicitly big data because these collaborations are definitely big data. And it provides a methodology and some technologies to support collaboration. And they have around 35 different groups working in this at the moment. And they have, they're trying to get started with up to 100 additional groups. So, and they point out they come from optics, cosmology, materials, algae, health, applied health, applied math, computation, rubber, chemistry, and so on. And so it is, it, uh, it will obviously involve things like analyzing the documents in the field, so that will be big data. The metadata will, will be like that of the previous, Use case 32 is very critical. So they might even use the same technology. This is not a technology, but more of an approach. Here we have an example which is focuses on some of the document issues uh, which are necessary um, about how we um, set up the social media infrastructure uh, to present um, technology information. And um, be able to deposit in a social media fashion results of an experiment in a fashion that's reusable. And this, we say, will involve things like um, 
analysis of all the documents. So they have ideas based on languages such as Sanskrit and Latin, which I'm not personally familiar with. Well, I'm familiar with Latin, I had to take that to school, but I'm not familiar with the um, their special features that's used here. Um, and um, they use these ideas to, in a way of setting up the methodologies in a cross uh, yeah, discipline fashion. So this is again, like the previous use case, trying to support Global, the global virtual, infra virtual organizations or infrastructures that are needed to support today's big data work. Here's the last of this subset, which is a very different. This is real, real down to earth. <coughs> we actually discuss bioimages, so bioimages can come from your friendly MRI machine or your friendly uh, device in the hospital, but they can also come from a big accelerator, which um, takes takes uh, electrons, whips them, accelerates them, and then makes, as the electron um, accelerates and runs in a circle, it will produce light, and that's what synchrotron radiation, and so synchrotron light sources are very important. There's several across the country of various um, degrees of, I mean, they have different types of um, energy for the uh, for the photons produced and they effectively produce images and those images which may would be in various um, wavelengths are then need to be analyzed and so this is a this points out that these are large scale apparatus produce as another is an example of light sources many of them are biological often you, you take this uh, these photons and use them to impact biological assays and things like that. Um, so as they point out, the cameras we use to record the results are growing in resolution. And this data is, is taken at the accelerator uh, website, but they need to be transmitted back either to a high performance computer or a cloud to be analyzed in, uh, in um, in effective fashion. I mean, there's a lot of potential data here. They have 39 beam lines at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab uh, synchrotron. I think ALS, probably advanced light source. And uh, so, and this is giving you gigabytes per second of data from these different um, beam lines. Each of those beam lines is split off at different places than the line and the then the photons go off and hit um, a particular target, and then the results of what happens are recorded by the camera. So this is a typical, uh, we will see other types of accelerators which um, are used for um, particle physics where the results are not uh, images, but rather uh, the events produced uh, recording what happens when high energy particles collide. So accelerators, depending on what they accelerate and the energy in which they have, can have their results uh, recorded in a various fashions. But all of them, these are big instruments. Each individual instrument produces large amounts of data. So we now come on to, uh, we have three more use case groupings to go, astronomy and physics, Earth, environmental and polar science and energy. The next set of astronomy and the physics use cases will include the famous um, um, Large Hadron Collider, which we will, which we discuss separately in this uh, section, and also astronomy. So we will now go on to those. <coughs>